Republican State Senator Pete Lacido served two terms in the Michigan House before his election to the State Senate, where he chairs the Judiciary and Advise and Consent Committees. He's a trial lawyer by trade with his degree from the Detroit College of Law. He holds degrees from Oakland and Central Michigan Universities. He is also on the Elections Committee, and he's talking about running for higher office. The shy and retiring Peter Lacido. Well, first of all, Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Happy New Year. And you know year. what? You do look great for a start of a new year. <laughs> you do look great. Are you done? We're about ready. But you know what? You being homegrown in Macomb like myself, yeah. we do speak a different language, don't we, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> don't drag me into this thing, man. <laughs> she has got the first question. Okay, you've heard us talk about roads. I'm sure we're going to get to that very quickly. But my first question is, are you running for governor? And can you do a better job than Governor Whitmer? Number one, the leadership has been... To say the least, I think there was a quote in the newspaper, uh, she's failed her freshman year as a governor. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. 100%. But she signed a lot of your bills She's also, law. wait a minute, you know, signing bills is one thing. Those were called bipartisan packages that support what Michigan needs. A difference every single day for these people. You can't just throw 45 cents on the table and have leadership in the House like Christine Gregg. This is a dead on arrival kind of issue. 45 cents? We barely passed seven and a half, and I was an absolute no in the House when that package came about on the registration and on the gas tax, and I will be no again because there's alternatives and other options that have been cited by myself, and I'll stay that way. Well, let's talk about uh, the district, uh, Senator. Um, Harper Avenue uh, in St. Clair Shores, where I live in your district, where you grew up, um, I call it the new mound road. Uh, it is it is falling apart uh, pretty Rapidly. I grew up there too, right next to the Dairy Queen on Lakeland Street. First house over there across the street from Lakeland Manor. Okay. And you were in the legislature in 2015 when the last funding proposal was passed. Yep. You voted against it. Yep. What has the legislature done to improve local roads? Here's the problem Public Act 51 has been around 70 years. And I got to tell you something it took five years to mount that bad boy. That thing's got to be now dismantled immediately. We need to empower our local communities, such as Mr. Ballinger indicated, and yourself. Gas is unsustainable. It is my quote of the day. It's unsustainable because we have electric cars, we have hybrid cars, which means they have battery and gas, and we also have electric cars. At the end of the day, we may even have a solar car like the Jetsons used to drive when I watched those cartoons. <laughs> Tell me it's not, it is, it's unsustainable. So that's a no starter for Lucido right out of the gate. But more importantly is, look at where all the vehicles are registered. Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, Kent, and Genesee. You have over half the vehicles of this state registered. That would be cars, trucks, and motorcycles. And as a result, keep the registration fees in the counties in which they are collected, let it go directly to those counties, empower them to fix their own roads, and you won't have it looking like Beirut Avenue on Harper Avenue. What about local gas tax options? That, that's fine. Leave that alone right now. Dismantle it brick by brick like they do when they take away some of those historical houses. You want to take the gas tax and leave that in check because of what Governor Engler did, where it goes to the schools, which is a Christmas tree that they caused up in this capital. Oh, no, hold on. Oh, no, no. no. Oh, you gas, hold on a minute. The, the registration tax. fees need to be kept in the communities in which the vehicles are registered because the insurance company said we generally drive 20 to 25 miles to and from our work every single day. That's what makes sense. That's the Lacido plan. That's the plan I'm on Senator, folder. None of the gas Senate Bill tax. 27, if you need to read it. <laughs> Senator, none of the gas tax goes to schools. Sales tax on Sales gasoline. Sales tax on the gas. Okay. okay, well, let's be clear, because if we don't want to perpetuate the, myths here in the public. 2% of the sales tax on gas goes to the school, which is almost a billion dollars. And Chatfield's trying to find, Lee Chatfield, the Speaker of the House, is trying to find a backfill to let that billion go to the roads. Hey, I applaud you. We should have never tied with twisty ties, taxes that were supposed to be earmarked for the roads to start to go to schools, and all of you agree with me. So if you if you're planning to decouple the registration fee from Act 51, it's easy. Um, simple. how many Republican senators from Oakland and Macomb and Kent County do you have on board for this? Okay, great question. I'm glad you asked that. I already have 16 Democratic votes, according to Curtis Hertel. He said, that's absolutely brilliant, is the word. If you take those fees and leave them in the counties in which those vehicles are located and registered 
and they drive to and from work every day. Like we're creatures of habits, we buy homes close to where we work so we can save gas, save time, save wear and tear. You will have money for the locals to take care of the roads. So do you have three Republicans to vote with your 16 votes? I've got, well, yes, I do. In you fact, I do. Them, besides you. Myself, <clears throat> Mike McDonald from Macomb County, and any one of the senators from Wayne because it brings also more money in. But, uh, there's not any Republican senators in Wayne County, so... Is there an Oakland County Republican senator? I already went to the have. three heads of the families, I call it. I went to all three of the executives, and all of them are on board with this. Yeah. I don't understand the okay. question because well, you've Dave got Oakland Coulter County. can't tell Ruth Johnson what to do. Here's, so. what, here's what it is. Does it bring more money to the county? The answer is yes. Does it take away any money from the county? The answer is no. And as a result, who wouldn't vote for that? Senator, what you're talking McComb about. Macomb County would have $68 million more. What you're talking about is a free vote. The Senate, basically, okay, you, you pass it in the Senate. Let's say you pass it. Go to the House, we've got the votes, too, because Southeast Michigan, together with Genesee and Kent, bring the votes to the table. Senator, it passes. the exact same thing when you were on their show in November of 20... Uh, That's not true, because here's why. I mean it's not true? It's not true. Senate Bill 27 was offered as an option and alternative last year. Last year, because we're in 2020. Senate bill also has an amendment to it that says we're not going to divide the money anymore on how long the lane is. Hall Road has six lanes on either side. We need to talk about how we fix all the lanes and not just one lane. And Chad's saying, yes, that's a good point. So here's your problem. You vote with your 16 Democratic votes and the three people you think you have. you got Mike Shirky who has to sign off on this. And you think for a moment that he's going to let you bargain away this and take all his leverage away in dealing with her on this issue? What's the leverage? I don't understand. When you're giving something to the people and it makes sense economically and most importantly equitably, that's the man that I am. Mr. Blasito, the timing is not right now. What does the now. timing have to do with anything, Tim, when we're giving more money to the locals and empowering them to fix their roads in communities that are broken? So if Mr. Shirky tries to stop this, you'll call him out? I gotta do what I gotta do for my people that I serve. And you know as well as I do anybody else, this is where we have to say the road ends, so and we're going to start you're a new willing beginning. willing to take on the Republican leader on this I issue. have to take my votes by way of getting them, and I will not sacrifice what I came to Lansing to do, do a job instead of getting a job. Senator, your plan you know, involves an increase in revenue and a redistribution. Yes. Okay, what, what is the proportion there, and how much money more would end up going to roads every year for the next 10 years? Or First whatever? of all, registration fees are what's called sustainable. Second of all, registration fees are a birthday tax for all of us. It doesn't matter what type of car you drive, or vehicle you drive, or truck you drive. It could be natural gas. It is paid at the county in which you register where you live. Right. What does it mean? It means $68 million more each year in addition to a gas tax that is going to be falling as a result of unsustainability with gasoline. It is going to be about $168 million more over in Oakland County, about $173 million more in Wayne County. Genesee and Kent, I've got the figures broken down. But that means that everybody is going to have parity and when I say parity, it means those that would lose out and not get it from my, my registration yep. fees in Macomb, I'll make them even off the, the top. The other 78 counties would be held harmless. They wouldn't lose anything. Not a penny, the way this plan is. No. And you know what? That, no, it does. Manistee County loses money. We take it off the top at $7 million. It brings in $650 million more, and we take $7 million off the top to make the 13 counties 200000 300000 even before we distribute it. How do you they don't lose a penny. How After the show, I'll bring you the figures. I'm from the Show Me State, Missouri. Well, so overall, how do you, wait, wait, wait. How do you reconcile all this with the Speaker of the House who wants to get rid of the registration fee altogether? Fantastic point. Even if you start to decline the registration fee, you're still talking $160, $150, uh, $650 million. So I don't know why he wants to decline something that's sustainable and gas tax people here. It doesn't make sense. I cannot afford to have any legislator look at a gas tax increase when we know it's unsustainable by argument of my own constituents sitting here so today. The speaker's <laughs> idea of phasing down is wrong. I think it is, and I'll tell you why. The gas tax is the unsustainable. The registration is the only sustainable. And for the viewers out there, <clears throat> go with the Lacito plan. You can't go wrong because it's not going to increase the tax. Right, so what if she comes to Speaker Chatfield about this? I have not. Well, she just not? found out. Well, because here's the story. 
<clears throat> we were looking at different options and alternatives policy-wise as well as economic-wise all summer long. So for the governor to be disingenuous to the Republicans and said we weren't working this summer, wrong. We were. And we have 13 bills that were put in. And I want to know if there is going to be any movement on those bills that I can tie this together with other policy that makes sense for the entire so state. She comes to you and says, Mr. C Mr. Lacita, let's, let's work together here. Will you give me a vote on a gas tax increase at a lower level? That will you no, not I will not. No, so gas tax not. is off the table. I went to the governor January 30th. I went to her office. I met with her policy people, and I met with her all, all of her heads of the Herfi families. At that time, I sat with her and explained this plan. I showed her that the votes are coming from Southeast Michigan. I showed her those votes are coming from Southeast Michigan and that the money is coming from Southeast she Michigan. She said take a hike? No, she didn't. She was open to discussion. In fact, when she came out with her 45 cent plan, what did she do? She went around Public Act 51, did she not? Yes, she did. She did. Okay. Will you stay for overtime? Absolutely. I know you would. All right. Uh, go to WKAR.org for more of our conversation right after these closed credits. We're back now with Peter Lacito discussing roads. Uh, Mike Duggan, talk me about him. Is he so on board? We went to see Mike with Marshall Bullock was there because I wanted to make sure that my Detroit caucus was all on board. And also Tommy Stallworth, who has just been appointed the external affairs officer for the governor's office. We sat in the room and I said, here's the plan. He when goes, is this, Peter? When is it? Like uh, 30 days ago? Okay, okay. Call it uh, December. I can get the date off my calendar. And we sat in the office and at the end of it he said... It's a good plan. It makes sense. But here's the deal. It's not my fight. It's not my fight. Which means I'm good with more money, and that means better roads for Detroit, but it's not my fight. It's a legislative fight. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I wanted Marshall to confirm what the, governor, what, the, what the mayor said. Then I went to Warren Evans, and there was, uh, how do you say his name? It's a Greek guy. Katavadis kind of, or kind of Andrew Kandravais. Nice. Cadervaeus was there. Former lawmaker. Yeah, and two other ones were there that were with his staff. And they said, if it means more money, how do we go against this? But, you know, we're not going to publicly, you know, put Lucido up on a pedestal because of this. I don't care if the governor uses this as part of the plan. Get it done for Macomb. That's where Mark Hackle and I meet the road right there, the rubber on the road. And you know what's funny? Why doesn't he support the plan publicly with her and say it makes sense? Why don't you keep the money in Macomb County, in Wayne County, in Oakland Why County? Why would he say that? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Well, didn't you? Well, I went before the county commissioners and gave a presentation. At the end of it, I did a resolution that they're signing. I don't really need Mark Hackle to say this is a good plan. My entire county commission that has constituents in all the district agree with the plan, including the Democrats. Senator, on another attack, what about the Mass Transit Authority, Jason Shepard's bill in the House? I don't uh, think it's going to have any daylight, especially when Mark Hackle has already shot it all down. I really do. I mean, how do you go ahead and say to your executive, I think this is a good deal? On top of it, I look at my constituents that I serve. This Mass Transit, when it stops at 8 Mile Road and doesn't even come through Macomb, <clears throat> and they said, well, later on, we will do that. I saw a bridge that they were building in Nevada that never finished either. Yeah, well, okay, but hold on. Uh, I don't want to go why, there. Why you not? Know? Why not let Oakland and Macomb and or o Oakland and Wayne and, and Washtenaw uh, go it alone and just leave Macomb out of this? Yeah, I know you can opt out. I'd like to see more of the arguments on it. I'd like to see the debate on it. And at the end of the day, I'd like to take a tally from the constituents I serve because you're only one. Again, I have to serve the majority, not the minority. Just for back to the roads for a little bit. Um, Nine years ago, a state rep from Saline, a Republican, Rick Olson, and and then at the time, I believe, Roy Schmidt, uh, who, who was a Democrat then, but um, he, uh, they put together a study that concluded by the turn of the decade uh, or, or, the, or the change of the decade, we would need to be spending $2.5 billion more for roads. Um, and That's two men opinion. But thank you for that. Well, they, they, they took all the data from MDOT and all the transportation experts. They, they, they did a big uh, work, work group study, and they essentially set this, the foundation for this debate for the last decade that we've, we've been talking about this. Uh, we are about a billion dollars towards that goal. Um, but but your plan right now is essentially just shifting decoupling, money. shifting money. You're not adding any additional just, just money minute, to, the, to the pot. How do you add money when I'm getting 38 cents on a dollar? Hear my lips and look at what I'm saying. I give you a dollar and you give me back 38 cents. I didn't make no score here. 
I'm only trying to get some equity back home. That's your home, too. I understand that. Good. I'm, I'm glad I'm, you do, I'm because at the end of the day, 2.5 is what these two gentlemen said was their study. Paul Edgeba is saying more like 80 cents. The governor's saying 45. Yeah. These are the same people in the same shoebox. What color shoes are they wearing at the end of the day? <laughs> two different colors. But, but your plan does not increase the overall pot for the entire state. I think what it's doing is redistributing the money where the roads need the fixing the quickest and the most efficiently and where her votes are if she wants to be the governor of the state. Would you Southeast Michigan has the most voters for this state. These aren't my facts. They're yours. You put it in the paper. Yeah. At the end of the day, you better satisfy those individuals. I brought her the voting records, too, of how they voted. I gave her what the insurance companies say on every application. Where do you work? How many miles is it to and from your work? If not, they'll Google it or whatever they call this. And at the end of the day, if it's 20 to 25 is actually what it is that the insurance company has figured, why aren't we fixing the roads in our own districts and empowering our own locals to do the best job they can for the people they serve? So Senator, what else is on your plate this year? I got a lot. What? what? You got another off the record? We could be here a well, day. right now. Just start out. Okay. I have a lot of criminal justice reforms outside of expungements. This is the biggest bill, but there were some things that were left out that I've got to get fixed on this. The money aspect, so 6,000 people show up in Wayne County tomorrow and said, here, I'd like an expungement. The laws just changed. Where do I get this at? They don't have the facility. They don't have the, 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 the women and manpower. They don't have the, 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 the what do you call the, uh, the computer programs ready to go for this. There's going to be some time lag in this. In addition, what about if you've been charged yeah, but they dismissed the charges, and they never proceeded forward. It's an arrest on your record. That's not been contemplated. I could go on and on. There's a whole dozen things. The judges have come to me and said, look, can you help us, Lucido? I said, I, I got it. I saw this. I waited till they got done what they had to do. Worked very hard. A lot of respect for Graham Filler. Great guy. Great personality. Love the man. I do. I think he's great. I think we work great together on a lot of packages. And... I get along with Stephanie. I get along with everybody. The reality is, it's going to take some time. What about Stephanie's a state senator from Detroit. Yes. Yes. What about advice? Chang and, and I are really close. What we about, talk. What about advice and consent? Your committee there has the <clears throat> governor done a good job on appointments. Absolutely. I, yeah. No disrespect at all. Every one of her appointments, Robert Gordon, I took the most time with, had a lot of discussion with him, sent him on a, a, a I called it a field trip. I said, you know, I looked at 14 jobs over the last 16 years. How long do you plan on staying in Michigan? Because i got a real problem with you if you're going to have $26.5 billion budget and you're going to play us. What about signing I'm, a labor peace agreement to get a marijuana license? I don't like the fact that they threw this union baloney in there. I mean, what they've done is they've tantamount to bootstrapping this thing that says that, you know, we have a right to go in here. Look it, that might be good for California, but over here in Michigan, we have a right to work state. Maybe unconstitutional, even in the administrative rules. You uh, have some bills on facial recognition for law enforcement. Yeah. What is your concern with that? Simple. First of all, what kind of society are we getting into? We've changed from when we didn't have any technology to we're growing out of control technology. The laws have stopped here. Technology has gone here. I'm just trying to catch up with technology in that this. If I'm walking down the street and they want to take my face and be running it through all of the pictures that they took when they got my driver's license... Don't you think I have a right to know this? Because what are, you, what are you trying to do here? What are you trying to accomplish? Is it to see if I got a warrant out for my arrest? The reality is the search and seizure, the Fourth Amendment, still has some hallmark of, 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 um, of uh, being in my, in my blood. That's the same with my cell phone or my computer, my tablet, anything that they take. If the cops arrest me, throw me in a jail cell, and they take my phone and download my phone into a computer, taking off all my contacts, taking off everywhere I've been, finding out how long I talked to you on a telephone and how many times I've talked to you and how many text messages and how many photographs I have, all this information that we commonly stored in a safe or some private seat in our home, we've gone a long way, baby, like Virginia Slims used to say, in that this, we used to put our papers and everything in the secrecy of our home. Today we put in our tablet, our cell phone, our cell phone's storing more stuff than we ever had. And therefore there's got to be a benchmark of saying, that's still privacy. Go get a warrant. Tell the judge why you need my cell phone before you start poaching out of my cell phone or my tablet. Very simple, very straightforward. Bill passed the Senate. It's on its way to the House. Same with facial. 
I don't have a problem if there's exigent circumstances, which is a exception to the warrant requirement. That if I'm in hot pursuit, somebody just robbed a bank, went into a house, go get them. You have a right to. But if you're running me through just to see who I am, what I'm doing, put the brakes on this. This is two words, ooze 696. Oh, terrible. I got to say this, though. The guy's already in jail, so I want you to quote it for today. By bringing a bill that says that we are going to now go after you to pay us, the man's already in jail right now. You can seize his assets if you have to. Do a law that way. But if he has no assets, how are we going to get paid back? She wants the pol polluter pay law. Yeah, go ahead. Polluter who doesn't have assets can't pay. Well, how about a polluter that's not in jail? How about a polluter that's not in jail, that doesn't have assets? We're right back to the same conclusion. Well, if they do have assets. Then take them. Fine. Pay right, for so it. So you would favor a polluter oh, pay all law. day long. If, as long as you got assets. If you don't, I want to hear the argument what you're going to do. Can you take a liver or a kidney to pay for it? And what about uh, uh, getting rid of this law that says you can't sue a drug company? Yeah, that, that's got to go. That's got to go. Bill Schuette is not happy right now. Well, let me ask you this question. Whether or not Bill Schuette are happy or not happy, what was the whole intent of giving any kind of limited immunity to a drug company when this law went into effect? It was this, to bring the drug companies to our state to do business, to offer opportunities, to get jobs, to do this, to do that. Everything I hear up here. But at the end of the day, has it really done what it's done? So you're going to introduce that bill? It's already been introduced, sir. Okay, and you will vote yes on that? I would have to. As long as I know all the language, I don't say yes until I read something. That would be wrong as a lawyer. So do you support Nestle with her lawsuit against the opioid companies? Mark Hackle supports that. I know that because he was talking about it. No, I think that, that I could support that. But did I see a legal analysis to see how our law in the state of Michigan is going to bar her from collecting based on the fact that it will be tied up in court? But at least she's given it the, uh, the old uh, college try. Well, do you think a drug company is a drug dealer? I don't know. They make something, a product. Who disperses it is the dealer. They're just the uh, per manufacturer. That's a bit of a legal stretch. I don't know what a stretch is. I just know what the law is. You see a stretch when you see it. I produce an apple, but I'm not the guy that's selling it. I'm an apple producer. I'm not an apple seller. Senator, Apples and oranges. Senator, Bay City just sold its two bridges over the Saginaw River, and um, and they're going to a private company will be tolling those bridges in the middle for anybody who lives or travels through Bay City. How would you feel about MDOT tolling the bridge over the Clinton River? Interesting. On well, I know 84. that if I got to go visit my sister on Harsons Island, I got to pay a ferry fee. Sure. Interesting ferry fee, huh? Just like the tooth ferry. But at the end of the day, let's talk about real reality. South River Road Bridge, where Mark Hackle, we on the camera, because I want to make sure it's all on the record. Mark Hackle and the governor were both on South River Road Bridge. We purposely, intentionally allocated $1.5 million for that bridge to be fixed, because she says it's an endangerment to society and the service of the individuals that live over and across this bridge. 6,600 cars go across that bridge and trucks a day. And she, vetoed, and she vetoed, and she vetoed, yes. Said because it was phony money. Yeah, and she vetoed that Senator. as part of the $25 million for the bridges. Senator. Tell me how that makes sense for our county. She oh. said it was phony money. I don't know what phony money means. Maybe she can explain herself. I don't need to. The veto was there. The money was there. There was $400 million that was allocated towards transportation, and she went ahead and diverted a lot of that money to what? Buses? That are going to go on broken roads? No, there's only a small Oh, of course. Portion. Go ahead. That, 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 Try to understand it in Harrison Township. I'm asking you, would you support MDOT putting tolls on I'd freeway have to see bridges? All, I'd or? have to see all of it because if you're going to price the people out of using the bridge, like on Gross Seal, you've got a public bridge and a private bridge. The private bi bridge is what? Cost two, two bucks across or something yeah, like back that. Back and forth. The public yeah. bridge is free, right? Yeah. i got to drive four and a half miles around the island. It's a convenience. It's this, it's that, and everything else. But that bridge finally came out and said that this thing, uh, Heather Cattell, though, brought it out and said, look, this thing's falling apart down here. Senator, let's put a ribbon on this. Within four months, will we have a deal on fixing the roads? Boy, I sure hope so. That was a waffle. <laughs> no, I like pancakes, to be honest with you. They're smoother, <laughs> like a road should be. Mr. Lucido, good to see you. Thanks for showing up. I Happy love New you Year. guys. You know that? If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have a cast of characters. <laughs> Say goodnight. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>